Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will cover an exciting new application called Dexter. It is used to orchestrate your Python scripts. In one of the previous videos, I have covered how to schedule your Python scripts with Windows Task Scheduler and with Airflow. Dexter improves upon the user experience and gives us the better option of logging and history of the jobs we run with it. It is very easy to get started with and it comes as a Python library. We will cover the extract, transform, and load or ETL orchestration with Dexter. ETL orchestration is a common process for building ETL pipelines. We can define the orchestration as the process of organizing the execution and monitoring of the ETL pipelines workflow. Today we will use Dexter to automate our Python ETL pipeline we developed in the previous sessions. Dexter is a relatively new but intuitive and robust workflow orchestration tool. There is a shortage of good material on how to code your own data pipelines with Dexter using Python. So I decided to port our Python based data pipeline to Dexter to give everyone an overview of the setup and the development process. ETL pipelines have interdependencies and they require a system in place to manage these dependencies. We want to execute the task in particular order, detect and log errors, and generate alerts. Dexter gives us the overview of the ETL pipeline via a DAG or directed acyclic graph. It captures the relationship and dependencies between tasks. Each task is listed in order in the DAG and Dexter execute the respective task in this order. While having the control over logging, debugging, and dealing with failures and retries. We will follow the ETL pipeline rep represented as a DAG. We will develop the following DAG next using Python in Dexter. A DAG essentially is a group of tasks. It is organized with dependencies and relationship and DAG is defined as a Python script. We can run a DAG on schedule or trigger it manually. Also, we can run a particular task from a failure saving us time to read on the whole pipeline again. So that was a brief overview of Dexter. Let's get into the setup. We will set up a virtual environment in a directory and install Dexter in this environment. We can create a virtual environment with python-m vnv. Make sure you have installed virtual env library prior to attempting this. Okay, let's go ahead and activate our virtual environment. So this will go ahead and activate the virtual environment. And in this virtual environment, we can go ahead and install Dexter, the orchestration platform, and Dagit, uh, the web-based UI. We can install both of these uh, with a single line. We can say pip install Dexter space Dagit. This will go ahead and install both of these libraries in our virtual environment. Let's go ahead and create a new project to work with. We can enter Dexter new dash project and supply the project name. Let's call it ETL. Our project is created and we can go into the ETL directory. And while we're here, let's explore the layout of the project. The project directory is called ETL. It is a Python package that contains code for your new Dexter repository. The test directory is also a package that contains test for your ETL project. Workspace.yaml file specifies the location of your code for Dagit and the Dexter CLI. The setup file builds the script with Python package dependencies for our new repository. And if you go inside the ETL directory, we'll see the following files and directories generated inside. First is the ops. Ops is a Python package that contains op definition which represent the individual unit of computation or work. And then we have jobs. This is also a Python package that contains job definition, which are built up from the ops. Then we have schedule. This package contains schedule definition to trigger recurring job runs based on time. We will skip over the sensor for now. And the repository is a Python module that contains a repository definition to specify which jobs, schedules are available in our repository. And once these are installed, we can go ahead and enter Dagit and hit enter. This will launch the Dagit platform. And in a separate command line window, 
Uh, we can also run Daxter daemon. So we can say Daxter dash daemon run. So this will uh, run the daemon for long running task or uh, to trigger our schedules. So once both of these are up, uh, we can navigate to our local host or the computer name on port 3000. Dagit runs on port 3000 by default. So once it's up and running, we can navigate to this URL. And this is a Dagit user interface. We will see whatever jobs we have uh, defined in Dagster, they'll be listed here. We can click on a job and it displays the DAG. Tasks are listed in order. We can click on a task and see information on this task on the right. We see the execution time and uh, last 10 runs and what sort of object it is and the input and the output this task requires. We can trigger a DAG from the Launchpad tab. And if you want to see the previous runs on a particular job, we can see that on the Run tab. We can see the schedules and other details under Status. So this is the Daxter UI, which helps us interact with our ETL pipeline. One more important step before we move on and uh, actually start coding our pipeline, we need to set a Daxter underscore home variable. So I have mine set up as an environment variable. All the Daxter uh, artifacts that are produced with each run, they will be saved in this directory along with logs and all other details. This is important if you don't set this up, your pipeline may not run correctly. Okay, I think uh, we are done with the setup. We will refactor our Python ETL pipeline script to make it compatible with Daxter. I have the code open in VS Code and along with our regular programming libraries, we are importing those specific to Daxter. So from Daxter, we are importing out, output, job, and op. Then we have a logging library to log info or errors to the run details of the job. Let's define our source and destination database connection. I have decided to move these out to a separate file, db underscore con. This has two functions. The first returns a connection to SQL Server, while the second provides a connection to Postgres. We import this file at the top. So from etl.db underscore con, and then we are importing uh, both of those functions into our main file. We will cover the op or the operator now. This carries out the actual work. We use the op decorator to define our task in Daxter. This task will return two outputs, df and table. We define this after the decorator with keyword out. We define the name of the outputs and whether they are required. Under this, we define a function that carries out the extract operation. We pass it the context, and with the help of context, we can log info and errors in the Daggett UI. First, we define an instance of logger from logging library. We will log errors with this logger. Then we get the connection detail for the SQL server with get underscore SQL underscore con function from db underscore con. We grab the tables we want to extract data from, from the SQL server's system schema, and then we loop through the tables and query them. And with few lines of codes, we have queried the source and obtained the data as Panda's data frame. We log info and errors if there are any, and then we return the two outputs with yield output. All of this is wrapped in a try accept block, so we catch any exceptions with it. Let's move on to the load function. In the load function, we log info and errors. Then we connect to Postgres with get Postgres creds function. Using this connection, we write the data frame to a table. We persist this data to a Postgres table and we call the toSQL function and uh, prefix the table name with stg to indicate that this is a staging table. We are done with the load process and all of this defined in a etl.py file, and this file exists under ops directory. Okay, now we move on to the job. We import the op we have defined above. We will create a job file. Let's call it run underscore etlpy, and import the etlpy in it. Let's call this job run underscore etl underscore job. In the job, we set the dependencies between tasks and define the order in which they should run. 
we run the extract function first and save the return outputs in variables. We pass these outputs to the load function and we will see the visual representation in the UI. This is how we run job in a particular order with Daxter. Okay, now we will import the job file into the repository file. This is the main file where we define all the jobs and schedules. So at the top, we'll import our run ETL job from the run ETL file and call it in the job section here. And we can also import the schedule files uh, for this job if you have defined any schedules. So let's go ahead and quickly create a schedule as a Python code. The ETL job schedules that runs a job every morning at 10. This is a cron based schedule and it accepts a standard cron expression. It also accepts hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly expressions. Okay, before executing the job, I have my PG admin open. And at the moment, we do not have any tables in our target database. And uh, we can launch the Daxter with Daggett command. This will run the Daxter and we can launch the UI on port 3000. In a separate CLI window, uh, we have the Daxter daemon also running, which is required for the schedules. So let's head to the Daxter UI and execute the run ETL job. We can select the job and it shows the DAG of the job here. We have two operators under this job. We can click on individual operator or the op to see its detail on the right. It tells us that it has two outputs and its average execution time. Similarly, we can see the detail for the second op. Under the Launchpad tab, we can trigger this job manually. So let's go ahead and queue this job and see its execution. Our extract is queued and it is running. Once it completes, and then the load process is triggered. We see all sorts of logs and information under the execution. So any event type with a value of info, we have manually logged this in the script. So we can see the table name and first five rows from the data frame. If we scroll down, we'll see the data frame again and the final message that the data is imported successfully. To see the schedules, we can click on status and click schedules. This will display all the schedules we have defined. We can enable or disable a schedule from the UI. Okay, let's go back to our PG admin and refresh our schema and we see a staging table in our database. Okay, let's perform one more test while we are here. I have received few questions regarding loading small to medium data loads with this approach. For example, if this approach can handle few million rows on daily basis and how long it will take to load this data. I have Management Studio open and I have a table here with uh, over two million rows. We will extract this data from SQL Server to Postgres. I have a job defined called run ETL load. It follows the same design pattern as the previous job. Let's go ahead and execute this job. We will monitor this job to see how long it takes this approach to load 2 million rows from source to target database. Our job has started and it is extracting data from SQL Server. We will wait for it to complete as it can take a while to ingest this data set. Let's give it time to go through the records and load it into a data frame. We have the timer in seconds above the execution status. We will wait for both of these tasks to complete. Okay, our extract and load process is complete. It has taken over 110 seconds to extract and load 2 million rows with this approach. I think this is quite an acceptable time frame. This approach can efficiently handle small to medium sized data loads. If you're dealing with big data, then I would recommend using one of the distributed platforms like AWS Glue or Apache Kafka that are designed to handle big data set. This is all for now on Daxter. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share and subscribe. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.